One of the things, um, you know, tips and tricks, and this is a, you know, when, when you are getting your app ready, one of the things you really want to think carefully about, and not enough people think about this, is what are the screenshots for the store? Okay? So, I mean, if you think about wh what are the screenshots for the store, um, you think about Muzu here, okay? Muzu uh, is a, you know, I, I showed Muzu a little bit earlier today. Um, I wanted to bring them in, um, but let me see if I can scroll in a little bit further. So, one of the things that they didn't, I mean, they, they thought about it a little bit, but they, but they, they didn't really necessarily go through it in uh, great detail and have their marketing and their design people uh, look at this is when they were looking at their screenshots, they've got time is running out, they've got uh, ninths of something or another. Um, I mean, this little picture down here is somebody's butt and, and I mean, it, it, it's somebody's backside and they're kind of facing an audience and it's somebody I've never heard of. Um, does that make me want to download this app? That does that screenshot make me want to download this app? Okay. Now this is the whole picture, so I'm seeing that they've got a range of videos. But if they thought about this and, and 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 really gone through this in great detail, they would have very carefully chosen what videos were actually being shown here to really help entice people to download this app by showing off the best of their collection. Okay. So that's I mean that that's one thing you know. To think about there. And then you look at this one over here. And this is the uh, this is Ball Strike, which is a, it's a brilliant um, app, it uses the camera on the uh, device, and you know, you, it, it's, it's a fitness app. And yes, I want to download that app. Because I want I want to I want to have that waistline rather than this waistline. Okay? <laughs> that <laughs> they've thought very carefully about this picture <laughs> and they've looked at you know, the, the time remaining and, you know, I can see score, how many missed balls, calories burned, that's a big one, you know, okay. Now, they, they don't realize that I'm 18 and a half stone, so I'm going to burn more calories just because I'm lifting more weight. Um, but there, there's some, they've really thought through what this picture is going to look like. And this is people's first introduction to your, um, to your app is they're going to, you know, go here into the store I mean, unless they read a review or something like that, they're going to go into the store and they're going to pull up, say, Express a, a Sketchbook. And now this one I think is very interesting because, you know, I looked at this and um, there were two things that hit me about this. One, wow, that's really fantastic. Two is I don't have the graphic skills to do that anyway. Okay. Um, but then I can slide over and that's actually pretty cool. And so this is something else you can do with this app. Um, this one, I, I kind of thought that, you know, doing the portrait one was, uh, was an interesting uh, model, uh, the different colors and so on. So they're really showing what you can do with this app, and I kind of like that, okay? Um, there are a lot of other apps, though, that if you, when you go back in here, um, you know, so let me just go pick another random app here. Um, well, MSNBC, I can pick on them. Um, you know, again, did they think about what each of these news stories were? Did they, did they design this experience as well as the app itself? Okay, so that's something to think about. Um, let me see. Yeah, so here, um, politics. Yeah, there, there's nothing uh, overly interesting there. Uh, Guy Farini whips up perfect meal for tailgating. Okay, last minute getaway. That's a nice little screenshot there. Uh, but here we're talking about uh, uh, Cuban kids starting the school year. Does that make me want to download this app? I don't know. You know it depends on you. All right, so that's one thing to think about. Back to actually right here. All right, so uh, let me. Next is do a great live tile, and this is um, uh, this is a you know thing that's been talked about already today a handful of times. Um, but you know, it's just I want to want to emphasize again. I mean, this is the this is the entryway into the application. Somebody has has bought into the idea of the app uh, through the store. They've installed it. Now what? Okay. Um, so this one sliding through different pictures of properties in France. So I'm going to I'm gonna I'm gonna open this one a lot actually because they show some really really nice little properties. 
Um, and and it's, I don't know, it, it, it's, it's a great little live tile. You know, Muzu, I end up looking at that one quite a bit. You know, what's the latest video on Muzu? Um, Sky News, they often intrigue me here. I do agree with Bill. This one is probably the most distinctive one of the tiles um, because it's got a very, very quick, simple, easy to look at, easy to understand icon. And so, I mean, that one really helps me understand what the weather is. And so, you know, thinking through what does your app do and what is that entryway into your app, okay? So think about, think about the, uh, the, the, the screenshots, think about the live tile, and um, really understand what information your user is going to need, what's going to entice them to come into your app, and so on. Another one is think about your context, okay? This is... Um, uh, I mean, Rick's talk was, was um, uh, all about designing for these different screens, but you know, one of the things I just want to make, you know, just reemphasize is, is that your users are going to be in different contexts, not just using different devices. But going back to Bill's talk this morning, you know, Bill talked about, um, you, know, the, the, you know, when you're in the car, you want, you know, to be attached to the speakerphone and, and in the car and, uh, you know, have the... Um, uh, your text message is read to you over the speakers. You don't want to have to be looking at the phone and you know, so on and so forth. However, if you're sitting in this room and all of a sudden your text started being read out loud, that would be a problem, right? So uh, think about what context your users are in. Now, their context is oftentimes dictated by the device that they're on, okay? So if they are on, a 2500 by you know a 1400 resolution uh, monitor, and they're on a desktop using a mouse and a keyboard. Chances are, they're not walking around in a crowded place polling somebody, you know, or, or, or something. Chances are that they're sitting at a desk, because very few people are going to be hauling this thing around. Going, ur, ur. There are people that do it. Sorry, I just walked right in front of your monitor there, didn't I? Sorry. I scared him. Let me do it again. No. Okay. So, um, so think about think about the context that your users are in, and uh, and, and make sure that you're designing for that appropriately. Um, all right. Oops. And as part of that, keyboard shortcuts. Um, you know, and, and these are the ones that are built into uh, into Windows 8. Um, and there's a lot of these that are really really useful and really interesting. So some of the new ones, Windows C, brings up the charms bar. Okay. Um, sorry, the Windows key jumps back to this and then whatever the last application you were in. Um, there's uh, Windows oops, minus, which does a zoom out. Windows plus does a zoom in. And you can zoom way, way, way in if you want to. And what I want to do is I'm going to get back out of that. And we're going to close that view. Oops. And now I've messed myself up. There we are. There we are. Okay. So there's a lot of different keyboard shortcuts. Um, what are the keyboard shortcuts in your application? How, how, how are your users going to be using your application? Um, I mean, I, I uh, was telling somebody, I was telling her earlier today that I uh, uh, started off in banking uh, software. Um, I actually spent five years writing banking software before I, I uh, realized what a soul-sucking uh, experience that was. And I went out on my own doing consulting and training after that. But during that time, I learned a lot. And one of the things that, that uh, we did was we were in, a, in that transition period showing my age a little bit between COBOL mainframes and uh, kind of GUI development. And um, one of the big issues that we were tackling was we were trying to um, uh, help reduce the amount of training time for new users, because it took roughly six months, it was between three and six months, depending on how smart somebody was. And we're hiring fairly low-end uh, tellers and bringing them in. And so it was oftentimes taking six months to get them trained up to where they could actually proficiently use the systems. And uh, that was a problem. Uh, the reason it took them six months is that they had to memorize all these nasty uh, uh, keyboard shortcuts and, um, and, and these horrible UIs, and it was just, it was very, very painful to do all the screen navigation uh, on, on these COBOL mainframes. Um, a bit like VI, actually. If anybody, you know, any VI users, Emacs users, okay? Now, here's the flip side of that. Once you actually go and pay that penalty, pay that price, 
for learning all those keyboard shortcuts, you are extremely fast, okay? And so, I mean, and the same with VI and Emacs and those kind of things is that once you have put in that time and put in that pain, you can be extremely fast with that, uh, with, with that set of key bindings. And so our uh, um, uh, users were uh, extremely fast at their job after the six month burn-in period. Um, but we were trying to lower that burn-in period so that they, we could get the you know, tellers to, to work faster, uh, or to work faster. And so, uh, so we did that. We made a nice little user, graphical user interface. They could uh, drag and drop things, which you know, back in the uh, longer ago than I want to talk about, uh, was uh, pretty cool and pretty awesome. Uh, we did a lot of things that were first in the banking industry, um, and we reduced the training time for a new recruit from six months down to about a day and a half. And so in a day and a half, we could get a user, you know, a new teller to do uh, transfers, to do, um, um, the uh, uh, deposits uh, to pull up and, and, and move money from savings accounts to bonds and so and it was crazy the amount of things we could get them to do in a day and a half. The problem was is that it would take them about a minute and a half to do a, tr a bank transfer, which was great for the new users. But for the experienced users, they could do that in about three seconds. Now they could do it in about a minute and a half just like everybody else. And so we had just slowed all the existing tellers down to a minute and a half instead of the three seconds that they had been. And so we had to build in a lot of keyboard shortcuts. And so what we actually ended up doing was uh, wiring in so they could actually hit a lot of the mainframe keyboard <laughs> shortcuts and, and get around the system and do things several pages ahead of the refresh, um, which was pretty awesome, pretty gnarly. Um, but we had to think about the users and the user's context and you know where they were coming from, what they knew, and uh, make that a usable interface for them. So don't forget about those users, even though this is very much a touch-first interface. Don't forget about the keyboard, don't forget about the mouse, uh, and stylus. Content, content, content. Content is um, uh, the most important thing in your app. Uh, I mean, bar none. Um, I, I, I've done this, uh, I've talked about this and beaten this drum enough that I'm hoping somebody in the, in the audience will, will know this. What are apps without content? Useless is a great answer, but it's not the one, I, one I've said most often. Nothing. Screensaver, I heard somebody say it. Who said it, was it you? Screen, yes, it was a screensaver. Remember the flying toasters? If you do, you're older than you want to talk about. So, but I paid money for this app. <laughs> at the time, and it was a it was a screensaver. I mean, that's all that's all it was. So, um, but even some of the screensavers have content. SETI has content, um, but content and data are the most important things in your application. So let them come to the front. Let them let them flow. Um, so if you think about any of the great apps on Windows 8, you know, so Sky News here. Um, this is this is all content. Okay? And, and now this is a consumption app versus a content creation app, um, but it's all about that content and, and bringing that content uh, right to the fore foreground. Um, let me bring up another one here. Let me bring up the properties one. Um, personally, I think this is a beautiful app. I mean, it starts off with this big uh, picture depicting one of their properties. Uh, now, this is editorially chosen, um, but you can uh, read about it down there at the bottom if your French is good enough. Um, and then you can slide over, and they actually have a little, uh, little bit of UI here. Now, their search is built into the app. And the reason for that, and this goes back to the, uh, you have to know the rules before you can break them. Their search is more complicated than a text search. So, you know, over here, there is a ability to do a text search in this app, but I also want to be able to go find and say, you know what, I'm going to look for a very expensive uh, castle, okay? And then we can go find, um, you know what, well, let's say that we want that in Burgundy because they, they do really nice wine. Um, and we're going to find, oh, there's no castles for more than that. So let me, uh, let me just say, let's, do, let's just do that. There we are. So there's five castles that are worth a lot of money. Um, and you know, so, so that's you know, bringing that content and very quickly uh, allowing me to interact with that content. They have a couple of editorial selections here, and I can just pick one of these, and these pictures pop up. You know, but it's all about the content. There's not any 
um, boxes or lines or fences or you know uh, other things crowding that content. Um, it's it's just it's just the content and allows me to interact directly with that content, and that's exciting and that's that's useful. So let me uh, you know I, again this is, I just I just like this app and and have uh, I found it about a week ago and uh, I've been d demoing it to everybody since then. So you guys are my latest victims. Sorry. Um, all right, back to here. So content, content, content. Be a typography geek. Um, the, has anybody ever been to a conference about typography? Got one, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. Seven. Awesome. There are also, I know, I know half of those people at least, and those are the hardcore designers. Um, this is, uh, I mean, there's a handful of, of, of um, fonts that are being used very heavily throughout Windows. Um, you know, uh, Andrew can talk about uh, that in a lot more detail with a lot more authority than I can, but understand the fonts that you're using, understand the font weights that you're using, the sizes that you're using, um, be a typography geek, and uh, that will help your app shine because we're not boxing and fencing all the content. Instead, what we're doing is we're allowing you know, the, the, the typography and that use of typography to help separate the content and help make that come more alive, okay? Um, use the right contracts. Uh, we've talked about these quite a bit, uh, or some, some, I guess, through the day. Um, but there's a lot of these contracts. Some of them are a little more subtle than others. Um, so if I'm, if I'm just gonna do a search here, so I can search across all of my apps. Um, so let me do a search for Dublin, okay? So I've got two here. Um, Dublin Forecasts and Dublin Outdoor Fitness. Uh, I can do a search in the store. And this is all by implementing the same um, uh, contract. Unfortunately, there's no Dublin things there. But I can search AccuWeather. So AccuWeather, you know, they already showed some of their search results there. So there's all the Dublins that they're finding, okay? So did you know that there's a Dublin, Arkansas, for example? Okay. Um, I would have guessed it, but I wouldn't have known for sure. Bing, Muzu. So that's, there it is. So now it's on the search. Okay. So let me go back to here. Uh, finance. You know, so I'm able to very quickly and easily with the search contract, search down through all of these applications. Every single one of the applications that is on this list has implemented the search contract. And I can, I can search across all of them very, very quickly. And the ones that get used a lot end up bubbling up to the top, okay? So you can tell I, I end up searching the uh, store and weather quite a bit, because um, those are the two that are kind of at the top, and Bing is right there as well, because uh, I end up using that uh, quite a bit as well. Um, so just by implementing the search contract means that your app will be used more often because it's gonna show up there and people are gonna use it in their searches, okay? Um, so that, that's, that's pretty awesome. Um, implementing the uh, share contract. So, for example, let me, um, uh, oops, not that. What I want to do is, uh, and let me just share my Twitter page here. If I go to hit share, notice that these apps come up here, okay? Mail, StumbleUpon, uh, uh, Twitro, uh, People, and Rowie, okay? Let me go to, uh, let me go back to Muzu here for a second. Oops. There it is. Let me pull up the, the video here. And um, yeah, so if I want to share this, I go hit share, okay? Those same apps actually come up here, okay? Now, let me go back to Internet Explorer and I'm gonna go select a bit of text here. Oops. Sorry, I'm gonna try to select a bit of text. Here, let's do it with the mouse here because I'm running short on time. All right, so share. Now notice that there's a different list of apps that come up, okay? Because both Muzu and Internet Explorer by default just share a URL. And there are five apps that I've installed so far that have said, hey, I know what to do with the URL. But there's only two, Mail and Rowey, that know what to do with just text, okay? So if I select text here in Internet Explorer, I'm gonna share that text. So you can share different things, and so share the appropriate things as a starting the share, but also as a share uh, target. So the share targets over there, Mail and Rowie, make sure that you're doing the appropriate things over there because that way your app will get sucked in. Now, on the sharing, so 
I have content and I want to start to share it. There have been a lot of people that have started off with this idea that, you know what, there's not an official Facebook app. And I really need Facebook sharing for my customer, for my app, for whatever. So I'm just going to build it into my app. And I'm going to tell you, don't, don't get sucked in. Don't, don't fall to that temptation. Okay? By using the share contract, and you're going to share when there is an official Facebook app, that I can guarantee you will be far more flexible and, and, and have a lot more abilities than you will be able to build into your app. You'll, you'll automatically already be able to share with it. You don't think about it, it just happens. You don't have to do anything extra. You, I'm already sharing with, you know, with Rowey here, and I can guarantee you that Internet Explorer had no idea that Rowey existed, okay? The guys from Muzu had no idea that uh, Rowey existed. Okay? Now, they're also able to share with WordPress, with StumbleUpon, with um, uh, Twitter, with LinkedIn, with any, any of the, any of the uh, social networks out there that have an app, I can now all of a sudden share with it. Okay? And I don't have to do that, which what that means is that I'm not limited by what I know of right now. How many of you would actually build in Yammer sharing into your application. How many people know what Yammer is? Okay, Yammer is a uh, inside of an enterprise social network. Okay, so inside of Microsoft, for example, we use Yammer quite extensively. And, um, but none of the apps build in Yammer support. Guess what, we can have a Yammer app and now all of a sudden, you don't have to build in Yammer sharing support. Muzu will be able to share, share on Yammer. Uh, Internet Explorer will be able to share, to share on, on Yammer. All of your apps will be able to share on Yammer if you just use the right contract. Now, let me show you another one, that, another contract that I personally like a lot, um, and that is the file picker. So let me go in here to um, mail. I'm going to hit new. So I'm going to send a new email, and we'll bring up the attachments, okay? So my attachments, something that's important here is that notice that this is photos, okay? I can go pick and say, you know what? I wanna, I wanna share from my documents and I can go browse my documents, okay? So, you know, I can go browse pictures and I can go download, you know, or you know, go, go share one of these pictures. But I can also go down here and say, these three down here are actually apps. Okay, so camera, photos, and SkyDrive are actually apps. So all the app did, all, all the, the mail app did, was it asked for a file. That's all it did. And I mean, it's, it's, it's the same exact lines of code that you would use to get a file today, except that when it opens up the file dialog, now what it does is it includes apps in that file dialog. And so, the mail app did not have to go write uh, uh, Flickr integration. Instead, I can go to the Photos app, which the Photos app knows how to do Flickr integ integration, and I can go pick Flickr photos. And yes, I want to connect. Oops. You know what, I'm not gonna do that because uh, it's gonna take me too long to uh, sign in and everything, but SkyDrive is an easy one. So there is SkyDrive, here's a set of pictures, and there is my daughter sitting in a tree. So we'll select, actually, here, that's her playing Kamogi, I'm getting stuck in pretty heavy. So now I have just integrated in with SkyDrive, and, and the, the mail app didn't have to know that SkyDrive existed. All it did is ask for a file, and now I can get that file off of uh, SkyDrive. But think about your app. Can your app provide files as well as ask for files? If so, implement the file picker uh, contract, and uh, very quickly and very easily, you are integrated in with the rest of the um, ecosystem. I mean, what's exciting about this for me is, is that the more applications that your users um, uh, uh, install, the richer and deeper the fabric of Windows 8 becomes for them. And the, and, and the richer that experience is going to become for them. And so I get really excited about that uh, personally. 
Uh, this has been hit on quite a bit today. Um, you guys are probably sick of this one, um, but touch first. Um, now, I mean, as I said, remember where your users are, what context they're in. Um, definitely uh, file and keyboard, oh, sorry, mouse and keyboard are gonna be very important to them. Um, but make sure that you are designing for touch first. There's a lot of things that that means, okay? So provide instant visual feedback when they're touching. Um, so, you know, on a touch down, commit on a touch up, okay? As an example, let me go over here to here. So I'm gonna notice that that bends away from me and as I held, kind of did this little duck. Oops, now it's really getting angry with me because I accidentally hit the space bar too. Um, but if I just pull down, notice that it does the little selection there, okay? So that's a nice little gesture, just that nice little pull down. But if I just hold it, notice that it bends away from me and lets me know that I've touched that. And when I let go, that's when it brings that app back up. Okay, so that's what we mean by you know, the instant visual feedback, commit on the touch up. Actions should be reversible, so, say, so users can safely explore. Um, who was it uh, uh, Rick was talking about earlier, how um, uh, on the panel, how you know, users will explore the application until something breaks. When they've broken something and they can't fix it, that's when they get scared and worried and, and, and uh, have a lot of discomfort. But if they, can, if they can break something and then undo it, you know, so the actions should be reversible so the users can safely explore and, and delve within your application, um, then, uh, you know, so when, when your users are doing something irreversible, let them know. Uh, think beyond tap and touch. Think about the sliding and the interactions and those types of things. Um, the, uh, that's, that's very important to a touch first interface. One of them that I've seen people try to break quite a bit is pan in one axis only. This gives them a stable rail for their uh, navigation. Um, so as they're panning side to side, you know, or up and down, um, just pick one, up and down or side to side. Don't, uh, don't try to mix it. It's where they're panning along side to side and then all of a sudden they're panning vertically because now they get lost and they don't know where they're at. Um, and and you know, does it make sense to be able to go across and then up? And then what happens when they go back across? Do you, do you take them to somewhere else or do you take them back down to here? There's a lot of confusion there with the users on what they expect. And so just pick one axi and, uh, and stick with it. Um, this is the, the slide that I was talking, that, that Rick was mentioning. Um, here are a lot of the gestures that we're gonna have. So there's a, there's a, a tap for action, a long tap to, to learn more, to explore more. Um, uh, there's a nice little, just slide it down to do a selection. Um, the uh, uh, rotation over there. Um, and this is, this is one of them that I, I like showing just because people uh, uh, don't always, uh, let me go find puzzle touch here. Puzzle touch. So uh, if I go pick a challenging one here, and this is something with a lot of rotation and uh, uh, various pieces, and so I can take one of these and notice I can rotate with my two fingers there. Um, and that becomes a, 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 especially in the puzzle, a nice little gesture. But how does this work in your application? But if you're doing the rotation gesture, don't worry because you can automatically get the nice little circle there. And so I'm doing this one with the mouse and so let me just go, I'm just gonna go select another piece and I get that same little rotation there. So I can do the rotation with a mouse and keyboard. It's just not quite as natural. So um, you know, that's one of those, you know, as you're thinking about these touch gestures, what does that uh, look like? And then app bars from the bottom and uh, charms from the side. Remember how long these fingers are, okay? Um, so this is a, we, we sat people down with a, with a piece of paper and literally painted their fingers. People with long fingers, we painted them red. <laughs> people with medium sized fingers, we painted them yellow. People with uh, small fingers painted them green and this is what we ended up with. So this is where your users can reach to comfortably on the side of the slate. And then, um, you know, so think about your interaction and where, where your users are gonna be touching uh, to, uh, to get to those bits. Also remember that a, um, the width of the average finger, and now, I mean, I've got these big moose claws. I mean, it's like, you know, touching with an elbow. Um, the, the, so, so my fingers are wider than this. Um, but the average finger is about 0.9 inches or about 2.4 centimeters, uh, or roughly on an average computer screen, 70 pixels. So make sure that your buttons are nice and wide so that my big moose claws can, can touch them. Make sure that you got enough of a gap here. That's about 10 pixels between these, but it's, it's, a, it's a fairly, you know, it's, it's a healthy gap, okay? Um, 
between the different groups there, that's, uh, I think it's 22 pixels uh, between these two uh, uh, sections here. Um, you know, but it, I mean, it, it, make sure you're using spacing, make sure your buttons are big enough and those kind of things. Design for the touch keyboard, okay? Remember that as you're talking about your touch keyboard, or sorry, the touch, um, you know, if I bring in Internet Explorer here and I go touch there, notice where my, it's right here, all the way up here, is where I get to actually enter text. If you have that down at the bottom, now all of a sudden the keyboard hides that and you can't see it anymore. So design for that. Make sure that when that keyboard comes up that your content that where they're entering text is gonna be above that. You know, think about where, um, where this keyboard's gonna be, where it's gonna hide and those kind of things. So um, those are some very uh, uh, useful things. Pixel density. Um, this is a, I, I believe Rick talked about pixel density, um, but there's a, there are three different uh, pixel densities that will support out of the box, and you don't have to do anything extra for these. Um, there's actually, and, and I'll, I'll go ahead and click into this. Actually, I've got three minutes, so I'm not going to stay on this for long. Um, you know what, grab me, grab me during drinks, and I'll show you this demo. Um, but all you do is you provide three different size images. Okay, and those three different size images, you name them, dash 100, dash 140, dash 180, and it will give you, it, 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 the, the system will pick up the appropriate one. And you don't have to think about it beyond that. Now, better than that, what you should actually be doing is using SVG, if possible, okay? So uh, scalable vector graphics have been around for a very long time and have not gotten the airplay that they have needed. Um, but if you can, use SVG and then you don't have to think about this. It, things will just scale and uh, be happy. Semantic zoom. Um, what are you showing on semantic zoom? Are you just showing the top level navigation or are you actually showing useful content at the semantic zoom level? Um, leveraging the animations. Uh, there's a lot of built-in animations and, and there's kind of a, a Windows personality, so to speak. And so, you know, there, there's, um, if you're using the built-in controls, so if you're using the, the built-in list box and the built-in grid view and those kind of things, those animations just happen and they're, and they're automatic and you don't have to think about them. On the other hand, if you're building your own controls or doing something a little more bespoke where you're not actually using those built-in uh, controls, um, we have animation libraries that are available from uh, JavaScript, uh, uh, .NET, and uh, C++, and you can use the same animations that we use, okay? So in, um, and again, grab me at the, at the, during drinks and I'll show you the, the demo for this. Um, but literally it's, you know, we have two divs and one's div one, one's div two, and we play a JavaScript animation and call and, and pass in the two arguments, you know, div one to div two. And what it'll do is it'll do the animation just like the live tiles do. Okay, um, the updating and um, uh, updating a badge or content entering, um, you know, what, is, what happens when you do a swipe select and those kind of things, showing and hiding a panel. Make sure that your app fits in with the Windows personality by leveraging these animations and helping your user understand the context of their data and how things are getting from one place to another. So, with that lightning fast chatterbox talk, um, any questions? Before we go to Andrew. Yes, back here. So the question for those on the live stream was if you have screenshots for the application. Uh, can you update the, uh, sorry, and your application is published in the store. Can you update the screenshots in the, of the application without updating the app itself? That was the question. The answer is, I don't know. Um, Andrew, do you, do you happen to know that one? So, so the question was, um, uh, you, they, they publish an app and they go back and they review the screenshots and they go, we want to update the screenshots but the application is fine. Can they just update the screenshots without updating the app? I don't know, I haven't been through that process. I'd hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, again, I, I hope so, but I, I don't know. Um, just, sorry, one other question yeah. on, on, on publishing the app or um, getting statistics. And I mentioned the different contexts that people use the mm. applications. Will there be statistics available to say that uh, your app is being used on this big device or this small device? Or is that not so? So the question was, um, 
the, the, the uh, you know, going back to the different types of devices and that kind of stuff, um, will you have statistics on, you know, your, your app is being used on the big screen or the, you know, what resolutions and, and, and slates and those kind of things? And uh, the answer is absolutely, if you write it. So I would say go capture those analytics. Um, uh, as far as I know, we're not capturing those analytics for you and, and feeding them back to you, but, um, but I mean, that, that, that may change in the future, I don't know. But I would say build in those analytics into your app. That would, that, those would be interesting analytics, and if you do, I'd love to hear about it because I'd love to, to be able to talk about that. Okay? Yeah, another question here, Josh? Then All right. Uh, okay, uh, we'll take, we'll take uh, two more. So one here, one here, and then, then I'll hand over to Andrew. Yep. Uh, Josh just wondered, is it possible to do um, semantic view and twist things and all the different keystrokes using the keyboard and mouse, like snap view and that kind of stuff? Oh, sure. Um, so let me uh, bring up and uh, let me go show you Muzu here. Um, let me go back. And uh, so the uh, semantic zoom, um, there's a pinch and zoom. Okay, so that's the pinch, and then I can just touch, um, and that, that gets me out and back in. Uh, control and the scroll on the mouse gives me the same, uh, same thing. Okay, so I'm holding the control key down on the keyboard and doing the, 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 the mouse. Okay, make sense? And then, um, uh, so, and then also, when I bring my mouse right up to the top here in the middle, notice it goes to a hand, right? That's because I can grab it and I can drag it over and there is uh, there is my uh, a snap view, you know, with the uh, uh, with the mouse, um, and then I can uh, slide that back out. Uh, I'm trying to think of what were the other gestures that I, I showed you the rotation in, in Puzzle Touch. Um, so I mean, oh, right click. Uh, let me bring up Internet Explorer. So I'm in the content here. Right click that brings up the app bars, okay, and then Control uh, sorry Windows C brings in the charms bar. Okay, so yes, there are absolutely mouse and keyboard shortcuts for, for all those things. Um, and it's, it's actually very simple to, uh, to do. It takes a little while for, to, to get into that middle mindset, but um, once you get there, it becomes really hard to go to anything else. Last question over here. Websites tie into live tiles. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Can <laughs> websites tie into live tiles? Or, or contracts. Okay. so. Um, uh, actually, actually, let me close that one. Let me go over to here. And what I'm going to do is, oops, let's go to um, Twitter. All right. And so what I can do here is I can actually pin that to the start. And what I get is, if they have a good fav icon, I'll get the fav icon. And I'll get some text here but I don't get a live updating tile that's changing on, on a constant basis for me. I also, from a website, I'm not gonna be tying into the various contracts. So I'm not tying into the search or the share or um, the file picker and those kind of things. So, uh, so the web apps are not able to do that. You are able to pin it to the start, but you're not able to integrate with the operating system further than that without going to an app, okay?